he's under duress and in a situation where he's not allowed to get in contact with someone or he's he's unfortunately no longer with us. A college student missing after a night out in Nashville with his frat brothers. Now, newly released security camera video provides the latest clue in the disappearance of Riley Strain. I really do think that had they had a buddy with them, um, maybe this could have been stopped. This is 22-year-old Riley Strain. He's a senior at the University of Missouri, where he's studying business. He's set to graduate from Mizzou this spring. Ahead of that, Riley and some of his Delta Chi frat brothers headed to Nashville for an annual conference. Here's where things go wrong. It was about 9.30 p.m. on Friday, March 8th. Riley's friends reported to police he'd been kicked out of Luke's 32 Bridge Food and Drink. That's Luke Bryan's bar on Broadway in downtown Nashville. Bartenders later told investigators that Riley had been overserved. As he was kicked out, Riley got separated from his friends. He did speak on the phone with one friend, though, saying he was headed back to the hotel. He hasn't been heard from since. To understand the investigation so far, we sat down with former CIA officer and FBI agent Tracy Walder. How does a missing persons investigation begin? I know that the first hours are really crucial. Well, so it sounds like with him, it, it was reported missing pretty quickly um, within the span of just a few hours when his friends uh, couldn't get a hold of him. Typically in the case of an adult, um, there is a lot of time, about 24 hours that needs to pass before they will go ahead and label that person a missing person. But because the situation was such where he was basically asked to leave the bar and then disappeared, they were actually able, in my opinion, to get a jump on the case pretty quickly. Um, I think the first thing that they would have done, obviously, after initiating the call to police, um, was look at cameras. I think cameras would be a huge help in a case like this because it's immediate and you can go to those stores and go to those storefronts and ask them for their cameras. This is kind of a, a dense area, this Broadway area, and I am 100% sure that all of the stores have some kind of functional camera. So that would be the first place that I think they looked at. I also think too, it's going to take a while for them to get the actual meat of cell phone data, meaning, you know, what was in text messages and those kinds of things, but they probably tried to locate his phone through some of the apps that he used, which would be something that they can do rather quickly. According to reports, Riley's friends tried to track his location via Snapchat, but were unable to find him. Investigators say Riley's phone pinged for the last time at about 10.15 p.m. on the opposite side of Nashville from his hotel. Where does the investigation go from here now that we can't track him on his phone? So I think the first thing that they're probably going to have to do, and it's my understanding too that, that they've started with helicopters um, as well. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but that's what I had read. Um, and so I think that is, is one thing that they're going to do, try to cover a larger amount of area. In my opinion, it sounds to me like there's a 25 minute, I guess, gap from when he was asked to leave the bar to when sort of that last ping was on his cell phone. In my opinion, I don't think he got very far as a result of that. I think he probably got lost. And so I think the next thing they're going to do is start searching the river um, because the river is close by. And so I would imagine they're going to have uh, radar and sonar in the river shortly. So far, the Metro Nashville Police Department says both air and land searches have been unsuccessful in finding Riley. They also checked all hospitals and jails nearby and have come up empty handed. Investigators are now combing through security camera video to make note of Riley's last movements before he vanished. The video released this week shows Riley walking alone down the street. Riley appears to be stumbling along as he walks. In this video, you see Riley run into the frame on the right side of the screen before he falls over. He ends up laying on the ground and even struggling to get up. It's about 20 seconds before Riley finally stands up and walks away. This video is the last time we see Riley with any other people. He's alone, but near a crowd of people crossing the street. As he gets to the other side of the road, you can see Riley trip as he stumbles onto the curb. For a second, he seems to follow along with the group before stopping, stumbling, and turning in a full circle before walking off. Walter says it's apparent by the video that Riley was heavily intoxicated. In my opinion, it's incredibly sad. Um, you know, he was 
it sounds to me like he was probably asked to leave the bar because he was quite intoxicated and most likely creating, I guess, a scene, um, if you will, there. According to local Tennessee outlets, two homeless people reported seeing Riley late Friday night, but these reports haven't been confirmed by police. The last place anyone for sure saw Riley in person was at Luke Bryan's bar. Since Riley's disappearance, Bryan has taken to Instagram, writing, quote, TC Restaurant Group operator and owner of Luke's 32 Bridge is continuing to work closely with the Metro Nashville Police Department to provide security camera footage and any other potential helpful information to aid in the search for Riley Strain. Our thoughts are with his family and loved ones for his safe return. Walter says it's unclear whether foul play is involved or if Riley simply made a wrong turn and got lost. I'm obviously just hypothesizing um, at this point. I personally think uh, because there is a body of water nearby and because this is a city that he's not necessarily from, he goes to Mizzou, right? This is a place they go once a year, it sounds like for basically a fraternity, fraternity formal or, or something like that. So it's a place he's not familiar with um, that well. And so I personally think um, that he got lost or uh, passed out and suffered, you know, death from alcohol intoxication. That's that's just my guess. Uh, but again, I, I'm I'm completely hypothesizing here. Because Riley and his friends came from Missouri, Walder says Nashville officials will work with Mizzou as part of the investigation. They're probably questioning all of his friends. I mean, they have to in a case like this because, as you mentioned before, they're trying to determine if this was foul play, an accident, you know, something of that nature. So his friends will go back to college, but they will be questioned, obviously, with the help of counselors. It sounds like the university has issued a statement that they're being, you know, incredibly cooperative. They want to find him too. Um, so it's, it's not that unusual. I was in a sorority in college and we actually had formals out of state. It, it, it was just something we did, whether it's safe or not. Obviously, we can debate that. But um, this is just something it sounds like they did every year. This wasn't his first time going there. Um, and so I would imagine they are working uh, with the university, which in my opinion is a good thing in this case, because it isn't just, I guess, a kind of this unorganized trip. It's an organized trip. The fraternity is working with them and the university is working with them. And I, I actually think that's a good thing. As far as the investigation into finding where Riley is now, I know that the Metro Nashville Police Department is seemingly leading the investigation. They're the one putting out videos, things like that. Is it possible that the FBI could get involved or any other organizations? They could. The Nashville PD is a is a very large, very capable uh, police department. It has a lot of resources at their disposal. So they will always lead the case. Um, um, my guess is maybe they will bring in the FBI just because it's multi-jurisdictional, right? You have uh, students who are in Missouri, and then you have students who are obviously perhaps still in Nashville. I don't know. Also, I think in terms of processing phone data, because there is an urgency, they want to try to find him alive. Um, maybe they will bring in the FBI to sort of expedite that, if you will. Um, but other than that, I don't see the FBI taking point on this case, if that makes any sense. While there's still a chance that Riley is found safe, Walder says that possibility is slim. And now we're pushing almost a week since he was last seen. Is it possible that he's still alive and is safe somewhere? I always want to be uh, delicate, you know, to the families because I don't know how I would feel, but it's been a week. Um, this is a 22 year old, obviously capable male who would find a way, in my opinion, to get in contact with his family or his friends. So I either think one, you know, he's under duress and in a situation where he's not allowed to get in contact with someone or he's he's unfortunately no longer with us. According to Walder, things could have been handled differently after Riley got separated from his friends. I don't mean to blame his friends. And the, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I have a, a friend who, gosh, I had known since she was five. Um, and she was actually murdered. She was the victim of a serial killer when she was a freshman in college. And she was asked to leave a bar because she was too intoxicated. And her sorority sisters didn't accompany her home. And as a result, she was kidnapped and killed um, by a serial killer. And 
I think that you need to stay with a friend. A friend needs to go with you, especially when you are that intoxicated. And I'm not saying that he was murdered by someone else. He could have fallen into the river and drowned in, in the state that he was in. But that is a very dangerous state. And so I think it's highly problematic that he was left to go on his own. I, it's a delicate situation. I don't want to blame his friends. But I guess that's my message for younger folks uh, in these kinds of situations to always have a buddy with you. And for others going out with friends, Walder says there are ways to stay safe. You know, we talk about it a lot in regards to females, right? Like guard your drink, never leave without, you know, a friend. But I think the same applies to males as well, especially when they're in intoxicated states. Um, always two, right, is that sort of magic number. You don't have to have a group of 10 when you leave, but one person needs to be designated to go home. Never let someone go home by themselves, particularly if they are in an intoxicated state. And I always think that keeping, I call it custody of your drink um, and not allowing anyone else, you know, to have access to your drink is always key. But I know I'm oversimplifying it, but, you know, in the case of a friend from a long time ago, Rachel, and I think in this case as well, I really do think that had they had a buddy with them, um, maybe this could have been stopped. Anyone with more information about Riley Strain's disappearance is asked to contact the Metro Nashville Police Department. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.